the word of god is given telling us what the blood of jesus has done and what it still does for us so the word of god is very important what it says is very important but just because the word says it it's not going to happen like it says in our life the third element is very important it's what you say We stand and lift up by For the joy of the Lord is our strength We bow down and worship Him now How great, how awesome is He Together we sing Turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. It says, Christ, for indeed Christ, our Passover, was sacrificed for us. Paul is saying that the Old Testament people under Moses, the people of Israel, had a Passover lamb. God taught them how to kill the Passover lamb, apply the blood on the doorpost and all that. They had their Passover, but Paul says that was only a picture of our Passover. Our Passover is the reality. Theirs was a shadow. So he says, Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. 2,000 years ago, Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. And its blood has been made available for our use. It's for us. The word for us is very important. It is for us. We need to take the blood and now we must be able to believe in what the blood what the Bible says that the blood of Jesus has done and can do for us and apply to our situations in life. So he says, Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. 2,000 years ago, sacrificed for us. But a lot of people don't realize that a deliverance of the sort that happened in Egypt for the people of Israel and even something more than that happens really in our life. We are set free from the bondage of sin and Satan today. And we enter into a new life. That's just like they came out of Egypt. 
and the way is open for us the red sea split into two food came from heaven water came from the rock no enemy could touch them nobody could come against them and stand against them victory throughout even the jericho wall fell because the the sign of the blood was upon them they were blood bought people the the fact that the blood was shed for them a substitute was made available for them and they have put their faith in that mattered not only when they were in egypt on that passover day but it mattered throughout their journey and their travel through the wilderness and all the way into the promised land that's a wonderful picture christ our passover has been sacrificed for us so we also just like them get out of the bondage of sin and satan enter into a new life god is with us no devil nothing of the devil can touch us we are blood bought we live under the fortress of god's blood as our protective wall round about us and that we march to victory and we march through this life doing the will of god and possessing the blessings of god and our inheritance in christ with the protection that the blood of jesus gives to us that's the message that comes out of that but let's read exodus chapter 12 go to exodus chapter 12 we've been reading some verses there but look at this i'll read a few additional verses let me read to you from verse 5 onwards it says your lamb shall be without blemish why because this is a picture of jesus this is this lamb is to represent jesus so he says your lamb shall be without blemish a male of the first year you may take it from the sheep or from the goats now you shall keep it until the 14th day of the same month then the whole assembly of the congregation of israel shall kill it at twilight and they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two door posts and on the lintel of the houses where they eat then verse 13 now the blood shall be a sign for you on the house the blood that they put on the door posts and the lintel of their houses it shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are and when i see the blood i'll pass over you and the plague shall not be on you to destroy you when i strike the land of egypt so passover teaches that the blood is not enough uh, no, the killing of the lamb is not enough the shedding of the blood is also not enough the blood needs to be sprinkled now another word a modern word for sprinkled is applied the blood needs to be taken it needs to be believed upon and you must obey what god has said and apply it there they applied it in the way that god told them particularly in that situation to put it on the door because the angel of death was going to come the destroyer was going to come and he must be able to see a sign on the door that this is an israelite house it must be a very visible obvious sign so it was on their door post now we don't have a real blood because the blood of jesus was shed 2000 years ago we don't put it on our house doors no we can use it in various situations we can use it against the attack of the enemy in our spirit soul and body in our finances in various areas of our life it's not just our house as it was in that day the principle is the same for all situations in our life the blood of jesus is now available our christ our passover has been sacrificed for us the blood is there our it's our business to apply it in many ways to our needs in our situations and in our circumstances in our life the thing is how to apply it how to apply the blood that was shed 2000 years ago the blood that is literally not there how to apply it like they applied and how to receive benefits such as they received in those days turn to revelation chapter 12 let me read to you verse 10 and 11 then i heard a loud voice saying in heaven now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our god and the power of his christ have come for the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our god day and night has been cast down so a voice a loud voice was saying in heaven salvation strength kingdom of our god and the power of his christ have come for the accuser see something has significantly happened for the accuser of our brethren who accused them before god day and night has been cast down so the devil has been very busy 
and until the end he is quite busy doing what he is the accuser of the brethren that's his full time job full time means not 8 hours a day 40 hours a week he doesn't take any holidays he is accusing night and day he does night shift as well as day shift he is working 24 hours accusing god's people day and night i mean if you can't believe that just look at the history of job the devil goes before god and appears before god and says no listen that's not right that guy is very unworthy guy how can you bless him so much now job had too much you know uh, talk about material blessings he had thousands and thousands of cows and horses and donkeys and what not you know thousands just imagine thousand 5000 cows standing there you know it will block up the whole area you know 5000 cows is a lot of cows you know this guy had 7000 like you know every every single item 7000 like you know i mean he had thousands and thousands he was quite a rich guy blessed by god living uh, in that way a very blessed man and the devil goes and objects to it how can you bless him like that how can you bless him like that and he says you're not only blessed him but you put a wall of protection around him you put built a hedge around him and you're protecting him so that no one can lay their hand on him now if that's not the best picture you can get about how god works for us you know then i don't know where you can go that's the best picture god blesses and puts protection i believe in divine protection also and you need to believe also I believe that God wants to bless us and protect us because he knows that there is an enemy and God wants to protect us and the devil is an accuser he wants to somehow create a breach in the wall he wants to somehow make an entry get in there ruin everything destroy everything he love to see you and I destroyed he would love to see us defeated he would love to see us finished especially if you're doing something for god the devil would love to see that he's the accuser of the brethren he's constantly accusing trying to bring up some accusation against us some shortcoming everything everything uh, about our life that's a shortcoming he highlights it before god 24 hours of the day that's what he's been doing and the bible says finally he's been cast down something has happened to him and it says what happened verse 11 they overcame him they meaning the saints overcame the devil him by the blood of the lamb now listen to how they overcame the by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony and they did not love their lives to the death how did they overcome three things were there the blood of the lamb the word of god and their testimony three things brought the victory the blood of the lamb the word of god what the word of god says and their testimony what they said now let me put these three things together in this way how can we understand this how can they overcome using these three things i would put it like this they began to confess with their mouth or testify about what the word of god says that the blood of jesus has done for them this is how they won the victory it came by three things the blood of the lamb the word of god and their testimony what the word said and what they said see the blood of jesus has been shed 2000 years ago christ our passover has been sacrificed for us that's why 1 corinthians 5 7 is so important it's there the blood of jesus has been shed for us then we have the word of god i've been preaching for 6 weeks including this week now about what the bible says the word of uh, the the that the blood of jesus has done for us and what it means to us today so we have the blood 2000 years ago it was shed we have the word which says what it does for us and what it has done for us the third element is very important is what you say things don't happen just because the lamb has been provided 2000 years ago that god sent his son as the lamb of god that takes away the sin of the world he has sent 2000 years ago that job is over it's finished but just because it was finished there things don't happen automatically here the word of god is given telling us 
what the blood of Jesus has done and what it still does for us. So the word of God is very important. What it says is very important. But just because the word says it, it's not going to happen like it says in our life. The third element is very important. It's what you say. It's what you say about what the word says, about what the blood has done for us. The word of God tells us what the blood of Jesus has done for us and we must take it and believe it and we must begin to say and when we begin to say it, that is how we sprinkle it in our situations, in our lives today, in various situations in our lives. We don't sprinkle exactly on the door. We sprinkle it in some other way. In the Bible, I can show you, and maybe in, in the coming weeks, I'll go through some of that. We'll look at some of that. But the term sprinkling, the blood of sprinkling is very common. It's called not just the blood, blood of sprinkling. Because without sprinkling, it means nothing. It does nothing. Hello. That's why it's called the blood of sprinkling. Let me give you one example. Let me read it. In uh, Hebrews chapter 12. Sprinkled is an old term. The new term is applied. Okay. Chapter 12 verse 22. But you have come to the Mount Zion. It's a very interesting passage this is. He's telling the believers where they have come now. Why? Because this is written to the Hebrew Christians. The Hebrew Christians were most persecuted in the first century. They came from the Hebrew religion and embraced Christianity after Jesus rose again. Now, the Hebrew people, the 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 Jews looked at them and laughed at them and ridiculed them. They said, you mean to say that you believe this Jesus that hung on the cross naked, crying, my God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? You mean to say this Jesus that couldn't even help himself and died shamefully like a criminal on the cross is your Lord and you confess him as Lord and you believe and belong to what is called Christianity, this thing established in his name? What's wrong with you? We have such a grand religion. We're from the Jewish religion. We have Moses. We have Abraham. We have uh, the temple in Jerusalem. We have sacrifice, sacrificial system. We have a high priest who goes into the Holy of Holies every year and sprinkles the blood so that our sins may be forgiven. Angels spoke to our forefathers like Moses and Abraham and so on. Angels came and spoke. We have the Ten Commandments. We are such a grand, respectable, fantastic religion of old. For thousands of years we've been there. And you believe in this Christ who died on a cross naked, crying, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Aren't you ashamed? Why are you following him? You don't have a temple to go to. You don't have a high priest now. You don't have a blood of sacrifice. You don't have the sprinkling anymore. You don't have nothing. You don't have our grand religion and its rituals and ceremonies. See, some people like rituals and ceremonies. The more rituals, more ceremonies are there, the better. And they will look at people that don't have so many rituals and ceremonies. Say, what kind of ritual and ceremony have you? Don't, one, one person walked in here, looked at the stage and said, you don't have nothing there. She was shocked that we didn't have nothing behind me. You know. She acted, expected all kinds of things to be behind me and me to be turning around this way, you know, and doing something. But it was not so. There was nothing behind me and I was turning this way the whole time and never turning back. Because she's used to that kind of situation. Everything is behind and the preacher also turns over there and keeps doing something. People keep watching and waiting when he'll, through, he'll be through, you know. So she was shocked to find that kind of a church. People who are hooked to ceremonies and rituals, you know, they think this is ridiculous. You don't have anything, any grand stage. You don't have an altar. You don't have this. You don't have that, you know. That is exactly what they were saying. They were laughing at them saying, you don't have a temple, you don't have sacrifices, you don't have a high priest with all his robes and everything, and you don't have the blood to go and sprinkle at the mercy seat. You don't have this whole ceremony of the day of atonement and Passover and all that. You don't have none of these things. You don't have the Ten Commandments. You don't have nothing. How can you follow this Christ? Where do you go now? You don't have the temple. And the author of Hebrews writes the whole subject of the book of Hebrews is the superiority of Christ over Moses, over Aaron, over Old Testament 
pattern of worship, the temple, and the high priest, our high priest is a better high priest, our covenant is a better covenant. The blood is not just the blood of animals, the blood of Jesus itself. Comparing that and this, the author of the book of Hebrews, for the Christians, he's comforting them by telling them, you are in a far better shape. They have only the shadow, you have the real. Those things were only a shadow, but you now have reality which those things represented. So this is a very wonderful passage to read, really. And he comes down, if you read all the 10 chapters, 11 chapters, and then come down to this, it's very interesting. I just gave it to you in five minutes. But let's read verse 22. He says, but you have come. But you have come to Mount Zion. He's talking about where they have come. They have not come to Jerusalem in a temple. He says, you come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels. Look at what he's saying. He's saying, you've come to heaven itself. When you, when you stand before God, you are standing before God himself, not in front of a temple, not waiting for the high priest to go do something for you. You are standing in the city of the living God, heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels. He's describing the scene there in the heavens. The presence of God. And he says, we can come right into the presence of God. The blood of Jesus gives us the boldness to come into the presence of God, according to chapter 10. He says, you've come here itself. He says, in the general assembly, in the church of the firstborn, who are, reg regis uh, who are registered in heaven, to God, the judge of all, to the spirits of just men made perfect. I don't have the time to go through all that. It's talking about the, how the Old Testament saints are there around God. New Testament saints are there. Angels are there. Numerable company of angels. It's the city of the living God. It's the place called Mount Zion. In the company of angels, in the general assembly of the firstborn, registered in heaven to God, who is the judge. God the judge is there. And around him, angels, Old Testament, New Testament saints. Uh, and all of them are angels. All of them are there. And then look at verse 27, 24. He says, to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant. And to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than that of Abel. Very interesting. <laughs> He's describing the heavenly scene and he says, why bother about going to the temple and having a high priest going there to heaven, the holy of holies, where God is, once a year, that too. Eh? That, is that better or are you coming straight to God better? Hello? You coming straight to God is far better, right? If you can come straight to God, it's far better. He's saying, you come to God. You come in the very presence of God. There are angels, Old Testament saints, New Testament saints, all of them are gathered there. Jesus is there, he says. He's the mediator of the new covenant. And then he says something very interesting. To the blood of sprinkling, which speaks better things than that of Abel. Now with all these important people, Old Testament, New Testament saints, angels, Jesus, why do you need the blood there? Why is blood kept there? And it is called, I'll explain why the blood is kept there. But the main thing is, it is called the blood of sprinkling. Just clap our hands. When you sing this, sing it like a prayer, right? Really meaning it.